Okay, we're still talking about solids of revolution, and there's one more method for finding the volume of a solid of revolution, and that's called the cylindrical shell method. And what I'll do first is explain what we mean by a cylindrical shell and how we calculate the volume of the shell itself. And then we'll take this idea of a shell and apply it to a solid of revolution and fi find the volume, and, then, and we'll work through several examples as well. So first of all, what is the cylindrical shell? Well, this diagram will help you to see that. It's the outer layer of a cylinder. And we're concerned with the volume of the cylindrical shell. And it's important to realize that we're concerned only with the volume of the layer itself, not with the volume of the interior. So think of the cylindrical shell as being similar to a soup can. And we're not concerned with the volume of the soup that it can hold. We're concerned with the volume of the metal that makes up the can. So the can is this thin layer of metal around the outer edge. And we're only considering the volume of the lateral surface, the side, not the top and the bottom. That's the cylindrical shell. And what we're going to do is imagine this shell to be infinitely thin. So its volume is going to be just about zero. Now let's look at the volume of the cylindrical shell. And the way to understand the volume is to imagine taking, taking the cylindrical shell, like you see here in this first picture, and imagine cutting it. So you take some scissors and you slice the edge open, and then you, then you unwrap it, so, or you unroll it. So you take the place where it was cut, and you spread those sides out, and you spread it out, these sides spread out into something like this. And if you flatten it all the way out, it becomes a rectangular slab and the volume of a rectangular slab is easy to calculate. It's just length times the width times the height. Just multiply the three dimensions together and you get the volume of the rectangular slab. So but thinking of the shell that way as able to be unrolled into a rectangular slab, that's the key to finding the volume or finding a formula for the volume in a given problem. So think for a second about the dimensions of the cylindrical shell. These are the key variables here. We're going to have a radius. The shell has some radius, which we'll call r. And it has some thickness here. We can mark a little section there. That's the thickness. And we could think of that as being delta r, the change in r as we go from the center toward the edge. The, the R increases by a certain amount as we go through the thickness of the shell. And then there's also the height H right here. And then let's imagine that shell unrolled over here. So we take this cylindrical shell, we slice it along one side there, and then we spread it out, unroll it so we get a rectangular slab. These are the dimensions of the rectangular slab. This top edge along here came from the top edge of the cylinder when it got unrolled. And so the, the length of this edge is the circumference of this cylinder. So that's going to be length 2 pi r, where r is the radius. The thickness of the shell here this little thickness that we've marked with that little tiny line right there, that's the thickness right here. So I'm going to indicate that thickness. I'll draw some little dotted lines and put some arrows indicating that's our delta r. That's that variable. And then the height h here is just this dimension of the slab over here. So I can write h for the height right there along that edge. And then the volume is going to be the length times the width times the height. So that's going to be 2 pi r times the height h times the delta r. That's going to be the volume of this rectangular slab. And that's also the volume of this shell. And remember, that volume is the volume of the shell itself, not the interior or the capacity of the shell, but the volume of the actual shell. Now, imagine the shell being infinitely thin. If we have a radius r here, that's the radius of the shell. And then this little tiny thickness that I could mark right here, I'll just put a little tiny mark there. That thickness, instead of calling it delta r, I'm going to call it dr. And we still have the height h. And making it infinitely thin is important because you might notice back here when we unroll it, 
it doesn't become a perfect rectangular slab because this inner circumference is a little bit smaller than this outer circumference. So one of these edges along here is going to be a different length than one than the other edge. So we don't get a perfect rectangular slab. There's a little bit of error in this volume calculation, but that error disappears if the shell is infinitely thin. If the shell is infinitely thin, this circumference of the inner radius is basically the same as the circumference of the outer radius. So when we make it infinitely thin, with the thickness dr, the error in our volume calculation goes away and the volume calculation becomes exact. And we still have these dimensions. We have 2 pi r along this edge. We have a height h and then the thickness here is going to be dr. So the volume when it's unrolled is 2 pi r times h times dr. And that's the exact volume of an infinitely thin cylindrical shell. Now in the next video we'll take a look at finding the volume of a paraboloid using cylindrical shells and then we'll work through some more complicated examples with some, um, some shapes that, that the, where the cylindrical shell method is by far the preferred method.